In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to texture bake procedural materials in Blender. So if you're a regular viewer of my channel, then you know that I make a lot of procedural material tutorials. And so I get a lot of questions in the comments about this topic because people are wondering how they can use their procedural material in something like a game engine, or maybe they want to upload it to Sketchfab, or maybe they want to use it in another 3D software. Now procedural materials only work in Blender, and that is because they are using procedural nodes. So so these different nodes and the different noise textures and things like that, they don't convert over to a game engine or to something like Sketchfab or another program. So if you want to use a procedural material in another 3D software or a game engine or something like that, then you're going to have to bake out the textures to texture maps. Now the process of this is just the same as any other texture baking that you would do in Blender. So if you already know how to do texture baking, then you can use the same method. But I do get a lot of questions about this in the video comments. So I thought this would be a good video to make. So this procedural material right here is my procedural asteroid tutorial. I'll have a link in the description and a card right up there on the screen if you'd like to check out that tutorial. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, I do sell all of my procedural materials on my Gumroad store. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll have the links in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. All right, so let's texture bake this procedural asteroid. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to create some sort of map to bake to. So what I'm going to do right over here in the procedural material is I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's just drop it right here. Now we want to create a new image that we can bake to. So to do that, I'm going to click on the new button and then you can change the resolution right here. Now I want these textures to be pretty high quality. So I'm going to bake this out to a 4K texture. So that is 4096 pixels by 4096. 96 pixels. You can set it to whatever resolution you want. I'm going to be using 4K. And then you can also make the name really whatever you want. I'm just going to call it texture baking. And then you can just leave all the other settings on the default and click on OK. All right. So the next step is that we need to UV unwrap this object onto this texture. So to do that, I'm going to click right over here on the UV editing tab. That'll take us to the UV editing and I'm going to go into edit mode. Now right here, we need to open up the image that we just created. So let's click on the drop down and I'm going to go to texture baking. Baking. So this is the blank image that we just created and we're going to bake the textures to this image. So I now need to UV unwrap this. So in this case, for something like this, I'm just going to press U in edit mode and I'm going to click on the smart UV project. And then also I don't want any of the islands to be overlapping. So on this island margin, I'm going to change this to a 0 0.001 and then I'll just click on OK. That is going to UV unwrap it and it might take a moment because it is kind of detailed. And so for something like this, that's working just fine. Now there are two really important things that you need to be aware of. One thing is that the UV editing has to stay within the boundary of this image. If it's moved out of the boundary, then there's going to be issues once you plug up the final texture bake. So just make sure all of your UV editing is within this image. And the other thing is just to make sure that there's no overlap. So when I UV unwrap this, when I did the smart UV project, I set the island margin to a 0 0.001. And that way there's going to be a little bit of space between all the islands. Now your object's topology will probably be different than this. So depending on the topology of your object, you might want to add seams and then UV unwrap it like that. Um, you also might want to use the cube projection. I'm not going to go into tons of detail in this tutorial because this tutorial is just about texture baking, but just make sure you have a decent UV unwrap. All right, let's go back over to the shading tab and we can now do the bake settings. Now, something that I want to do to be able to preview the bake is I'm going to click right here and I'm going to click down and drag and I'm going to split the window. And then right here on this window, I'm going to click on this to change the editor type and I want to change it to the UV editor. That way we'll be able to see the texture bake. So we want to be able to see this image. So I'm going to click on the drop down and then I can click on the texture baking image. All right, so now let's do the texture baking settings. So to do the settings, we're going to go right over here and we're going to go to the render properties. Now it's really important to make sure you're using the cycles render engine. Now if you are using the EV render engine, just change it to cycles for now and then once you've texture baked, you can change it back to EV. EV doesn't support baking, but once you've texture baked it, you can change it back to EV. Now on the sampling here, I found that if you turn the render samples down, it's going to texture bake faster. So on the sampling here, on the render samples, I'm just going to turn the samples to like 10 and that way it will texture bake faster and I found that it 
doesn't really affect the quality of the texture bake. All right, so if you're in the cycles render engine, you can go right down here and you can see that there is a baking tab right here. So we're just gonna open up this baking tab. Now, if you take a look at this principal BSDF, you can see that on this procedural asteroid, there are three different values. There is the base color, there is the roughness, and then there also is the normal. So I wanna bake three maps, a base color, roughness, and normal. And those are the three main maps that you're gonna be using. Now, occasionally there are some other things like maybe an emission, you might have something plugged into the emission. And in that case, you'll just have to bake the emission values just like you bake the other values. And also, if your object is metallic at all, if you have some sort of metallic value, or maybe you've turned up the metallic, then you should definitely watch my video where I show you how to bake metallic maps. because the process is a little bit different, so I'll have a card right up there on the screen and also the link in the video description where I show you how to specifically bake metallic maps because the process is a little bit different. But for most things, you're probably just going to have a base color, a roughness, and a normal. So let's go ahead and bake those. So the first one is the base color. So I actually want to change the bake type. So from the combined, I'm going to click on this and I want to change it to diffuse. Diffuse is the same as base color. Now, if I tried to bake this right now, it would actually bake this with the lighting data. So you can see there's some shadows here and then it's kind of brighter over here and it would actually bake that into the texture, but I don't want to do that. I just want to bake the base color. So to just bake the base color, I need to turn off the direct and indirect under the influence because we don't want to bake the lighting. We just want to bake the color. And then there is also one other thing. You might need to turn the island margin down. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to give a little bit more space here in the UV editing. 16 is a little bit high and I don't want it to have any overlap so on the margin here I'm just going to turn this to like four pixels and that way it will have a little bit of an overlap by four pixels on the UV editing all right now just a few more important things before you actually hit the bake button first thing is to make sure this object is selected in the 3d space the other important thing is to make sure this texture baking image is selected as well and then I always like to press Control s just to make sure I've saved my project and then I can click on bake and when I do that you can see there's a loading bar right down here and because I turn the sampling down it shouldn't take very long uh, we will just wait for that to finish and there we go so it's finished so if you zoom in here you can see we now have the color map so I now just need to save this map because it's not going to be saved in blender and so I have to save it out to my hard drive so I'm gonna click on image right here and then I'm gonna click on save as so then just find somewhere on your computer where you want to save all the texture maps and I'm gonna save this as asteroid color and then I want the file size to be a little bit smaller so I'm gonna save it as a JPEG instead of a PNG and that way the file size will be a bit smaller and then I can click on the save as all right so that is the first one so we just need to do the same thing two more times for the roughness and the normal so to do that I'm gonna go right over here on the bake type and I don't want it to be diffuse this time I want to change it to roughness so just make sure this object is selected make sure the texture baking is selected I'll press Control s again just to save that just in case blender crashes for some reason and then I can click on bake again and it finished and it did not take very long so you can see that is the roughness map so we just need to save this to our computer once again so I'll click on image and then I'll click on save as and then I will name this one to asteroid roughness and then I'll save it as a JPEG and I'll just click on the save as image all right let's just do that one more time for the normal so on the bake type right here I want to change it to the normal so it's right here and then again make sure this object is selected make sure the texture baking image is selected I'll press Control s again to save and then we can click on bake and it finished and again that did not take very long so there we go there is all of our normal data so let's click on image and then just click on save as and then this one I want to change to asteroid normal and again I'll just save that as a JPEG with my other files and I'll click on save as image all right so the texture baking is done so we just need to add in those images so right over here on this material I'm just gonna click on the X to actually get rid of this material and I can also close this by clicking here when the crosshair appears I can click drag up and then let go to close that all right now on this object I'm gonna click on new to add a new material and then just to set up the material really quickly I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on so if you don't have the node wrangler turned on you can just click on edit and then open up blenders user preferences and then under the add-ons if you search for the node wrangler you can just check mark the node wrangler add-on so with the node wrangler now turned on I'm going to click and select the principled BSDF and I can now press Control shift 
T. And when you press Control Shift T, that is going to bring up Blender's file browser, and we can now just select the images. So I'm going to select the color and then hold down the Control key and select the normal and the roughness. So now that we have all of those three selected, I can click on the Principled Texture Setup button. And so the Node Wrangler is going to detect the names in the image, and so it's automatically going to set up the material for us. Now, if for some reason it doesn't work, then you can just set this up manually. And if you don't know how to properly set up textures in Blender, then I have a tutorial on that. I'll have a link in the description where I show you how to manually set up texture maps properly in Blender. So that is all set up. And now if you go into rendered mode, you can see that that looks really great. So we are now using these texture maps. I can preview the different texture maps, but it looks just like the procedural material that we originally started out with. And so now that we've baked this out to texture maps, you could use this in a game engine, you could upload it to something like Sketchfab, or you could also use it in another 3D software. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope the tutorial was helpful. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then you can check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.